Hello, I'm Landon Schlingen, and today we are going to review JavaScript fundamentals by building a gradebook app. There's only four challenges in this project, and it's, I guess, review. So let's start this project. I haven't looked at it before. Uh, let's see what's happening. There's two undefines here. We have a step one. Um, a teacher has finished grading their student's test and needs our help to calculate the average score for the class. Okay, so we have to do a get average function takes an array of test scores, and then it returns average score. Okay, yep. Yeah. So average is calculated by sum of all scores divided by the total number of the scores. A couple of function calls have been provided. Okay, so this is how we can test it when it, yeah. So that's why it's returning undefined. This function has nothing in it. If I return one, then these two will have one here because we're calling the function and logging the result. Here we have the scores. We just have to um, loop them over and get the average. Um, yeah, it gives us a tip, loop over them, move them all up, and then use the length property to um, divide that by the length property. Okay, so do a higher order function in JavaScript to like basically do this on one line, but uh, that wouldn't be in the style of this beginner challenge in free code camp. So I'm just going to do it uh, how we would normally do it uh, with uh, the higher order functions. So I'm going to go for int or for int. So I'd be in like Java, let i equal zero, i less than um, scores out length. And I plus plus. Oh, and then I need semicolons here. I've forgotten how to code. Um, I plus plus. And then inside of here, we have to add them all up. So scores of I plus equal. I'll just do let um, total equal zero starting out. And then we're going to go total plus equal scores of i because we're going to iterate through all the scores, add that to the total. For some reason, this is still grayed out. Maybe it's because we're not using it down here. And then we're going to do total or let average equal total divided by scores.length and that should get us our average and I can just return average like so. There we go, 71.7 and 85.4. Hopefully that's pretty easy to follow and I wonder what we're going to do in the next challenge. Let's see if this is correct anyway. It looks like it is and we can go on to the next challenge. There's only three more left. All right, step number two. Now our teacher needs help converting the student score to a letter grade. So A, B, C, D, or F. Um, so we just need to use a bunch of if statements, I suppose. Yeah, remember that we learned about if statements. Remember that we learned about comparison operators. So this one is just kind of a grind. It should be pretty easy. We just say if score. If score is less than 100 or equals 100, if score equals 100, then they get an A plus. Then return an A plus inside of string. Else if the score is, I don't even need to use else if, but uh, I will just because it's kind of in the style of, of this 90 to 99. So we go if score is less than, I'm trying to think how we do this so I don't have to do the or symbol all the time. Score is less than 99, then return an A. If score is less than a 89, 
or it should be less than or yeah, less than or equal to. Else if the score is less than or equal to 89, then return and it would be. And I can just co copy this down a couple more times. Alt shift down to copy this down. We need 79 and 69. And then just an else at the end for F, B, C, and D. And I don't know, it should be it, I guess. Oh, okay. I should actually do should actually do greater than 90 on these. Greater than or equal to 90 instead of this way. That way I can get away with just doing this once and I have to do the or between thing. Okay, so score greater than 80. If score is greater than or equal to 80. If score is greater than or equal to 70. If score is greater than or equal to 60 or 59. No, zero. I mean, <laughs> we know. For D, 60. And then otherwise F. There we go. A, B, and F. That seems right. All right. Pretty simple. I think I did that pretty much in the shortest amount of code possible. You could also use case switch statements, but I'm not sure if we need about those yet. All right, let's check. It does work. Let's go on to the next challenge. We're halfway done already. Teacher is really happy with the program you have created so far, but now they want to have an easy way to check if a student has a passing grade. Okay, so F or passing. Okay. Complete the function that takes a student score, and it should return true if they have a passing grade and false if they don't. You use get grade function to get the student's grade, then check. Okay, so we can literally do this on one line. <laughs> um, uh, return get grade, we pass on the score, and then, well, actually, maybe not. Anyway, it makes more sense if I use if statements. I can actually just go const um, grade or letter grade. Yeah, letter grade equals this get score function or get grade. And then if letter grade is an F equals an F, then it is false. Or I can just return. Yeah, I'll just do that. I can literally, I can just return letter grade equals F. And to make this even shorter, I can change this to get grade equals score. Get grade equals score equals F. Or get grade score equals F. That would be fine for this one. Yeah. I could even turn this function into a one liner, but uh, I'm not going to. False, true, false. And that seems correct. Has passing grade, though? I should actually do not equals. So that 100 is passing grade, 53 is not. There we go. That is correct. Beautiful. Step four, the last step. Now that the teacher has all the information they need, they want to be able to message the students. We complete the student message function with total score student. Uh, let's do the score for parameters. Example code. If a student passed the course, the string should read this format. If class average, your grade, you pass the course. If the student failed the course, the string should follow this format. You failed the course at the end. Okay, you passed, you failed. Place average goes here with the average. Okay, so they want us to use string concatenation, so I suppose I'll do that. Be careful with punctuation. Yeah. Return. We need quotes. First one is class average. So class. Average and make sure put colon here. 
Make that a plus. Average score goes here. So we have our total scores and then the student score. So I first need to calculate the average. Thankfully, we have that function up here. So we're going to go get average and pass on the scores. Get average. We're going to pass in total scores to that function. That should give us the average. And we need a period. There's a period and then a space, your grade. And then after that, we need a grade goes here. So with the student's grade, do they want the letter grade or do they want uh, their score? Probably the letter grade, is my guess. So I'm going to actually pass it into get grade. Yeah, get grade with the score. Get grade, pass in student score. That should give us a, yeah, your grade F. And then it would be you failed the course because they got an F. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to go plus. First, we need a period. And then for this string, we can do an if statement or I kind of want to do a ternary operator, but I should do an if statement. I really should. If we wanted to do an if statement, we would go because we pass in letter grade to that function. Here, let me go const letter grade equals get grade. Since we're going to be using this in two spots, I'm going to use this down here. And I'm going to use it inside of another function. So we're going to go if we're going to go let um, passing string or let oh, what, what do I name it here? This fault this ending part you fail the course or you passed um, result string uh, course result equals you passed you passed the course and then we'll say if failed basically so we're going to say if not has passing grade if not has passing grade, pass in the letter grade, then we're going to actually change the course results to you failed the course. And then we're just going to make sure to add the course results onto here, onto the end. All right, so there we go. Class average 71.7, your grade F, you failed the course which is true because they got a 37. If they got a 90, your grade A, you still failed the course. What? That shouldn't be right. Because A is not equal to F. How uh, long get grade score? You get 90, which would be an A. Yeah. Why does it still say you failed the course? Oh, we're passing in the score. Not a letter. Oh, we're passing. Okay. I don't even have to. I don't pass in the letter grade. I pass in the student score. That's why. Whoops. Student score. There we go. Yeah, we don't have to pass in the letter grade. In fact, I can just do this down here then. Since we're only using it once, it's fine. There we go. Class average, your grade A, you pass the course. If they get a 40, then it'll say you failed the course and you got an F. Class average 71, seems about right for the average. And there we go, we completed it. Um, just this line of code here. Let's see if the punctuation is correct. It looks like it is, because we got confetti. Yippee! Great. All right, that was Review JavaScript Fundamentals by Building a Gradebook App. The next challenge we have is Learn Basic JavaScript by Building a Role-Playing Game. And this has 173 challenges, so we'll probably take a while to complete all those. But I'll see you in the next video. Peace out. Bye.